A while back I saw this VFX breakdown from 2012 and I thought I can do that. I started off by doing a ridiculous amount of testing in order to get the ground cracking the way I wanted it to. In the end I found it best to use a simple cell fracture for the lower part and then use the explode modifier to get some smaller pieces on top. Then I simulated that lower layer using high steps in order to get some accurate motion. I baked that to keyframes and then simulated the smaller pieces with lower steps to save on processing time. Throughout this project I used a bunch of these little workarounds in order to save baking times and just keep the viewport as responsive as possible. I also displaced the lower layer a bunch in order to hide the very obvious Voronoi pattern from the cell fracture. So far this is very similar to what I did way back in my first destruction tutorial. Once that was all done I opened up a new blender scene and started working on the house destruction. I got some really nice house models from Sketchfab but I quickly ran into my first big problem. As you can see this model looks absolutely fantastic as it is but if we try to fracture this now we'd notice that it doesn't look remotely realistic when destroyed. In big budget productions they usually get their models built from scratch for the purpose of being destroyed later on. And this means they'll add stuff like interior wood structure, layers to the walls and other house stuff with different material properties. I don't have the time, skill or processing power in order to do this, so I'm gonna have to cheat my way through it. The basic idea here is that I'm gonna distribute a bunch of even cuts throughout the geometry using a big grid and the knife project option in edit mode. Then I'm gonna fracture everything using the explode modifier and then get the actual simulated movement from a simplified remesh with regular cell fracture. Then I'm gonna select some of those smaller pieces and make them simulated on their own in order to break up the pattern a little bit and add some more chaos to the simulation. This process is something that I described in detail in my plane crash tutorial, so if you're interested in taking a deeper look into that, I can uh, drop the link down below. This is basically just a workflow that allows me to fracture objects that aren't really meant to be fractured in the first place. I rendered out some tests and I was pretty happy with how that was turning out. In the final scene though I had to kind of lower the detail on all of the houses in order to get it to bake at all. But I thought it would be fine after adding all of the smoke and other debris stuff so I didn't stress too much about that. After that I started blocking out the actual scene, placing houses in a nice street formation and changing up the textures a little bit in order to hide some repetition. For some reason I felt kind of bad about the destroying a street from another country, so I grabbed some inspiration from Sweden when designing this scene. We have this pretty cool island called Gotland, where the main city is basically just a big medieval fortress with a bunch of old houses in it. So I got this photo scan of some ruins and placed it in the background, and now it looks kind of like Visby. Then I placed all of those houses in a collection and opened that collection in a new blender scene. This allowed me to work on the house destruction without having the previously baked ground destruction slow me down. Then I did basically the same thing I did to one house but to all of these houses. But I kinda had to do it in batches because when I tried to do it all at once blender just crashed on me. Um, so <laughs> and I do have a pretty beefy computer but my workflow at this point basically consisted of pressing one button then waiting 10 minutes and then pressing another so that wasn't very fun. Once all of that was baked to keyframes I could import that same collection back into the main scene. Now I had some ground being destroyed and some houses falling down with it. At this point I started working on adding some more details in order to bring it all together. So I added some trees, some bushes and some random barrels and crates and whatnot. And in the end you didn't really notice any of these details except for the trees maybe. But it just populated the scene a little bit more and I don't know, made, made it feel a little bit more lived in maybe. I had this idea of having lanterns that fall to the ground and spill burning oil as the ground cracks. So to do that I ran a simple rigid body simulation on some old street lamps. Then I animated this emitter object to kind of spread out once the lanterns hit the ground. Then I could just use Blender's quick smoke preset and set it to emit fire at the frame of the collision. Then I parented that emitter object to the actual ground piece it was on top of so it kind of fell down with everything. To be able to import that into my main scene I baked it all to a VDB sequence, imported it back into the same scene in order to make sure everything lined up and then I did all of the shading and stuff in that scene where I could actually work in real time. 
and when I was happy with that I just appended those fire objects into the main scene and we had some uh, burning lanterns. I used that exact same method to get the rolling smoke cloud that kind of follows the destruction and it's kind of interesting to see how when there's enough chaos going on in a scene like this your mind kind of picks up on details that aren't really there. Like here for example it kind of looks like there are grains of dust and sand being kicked up but there's nothing there. Maybe it's not a good idea to rely on that in your final scene but it's kind of fun to see how that played out. Now all that was left to do was to animate a camera movement and render out my frames. Once I had my render I brought it into my compositing software and gave it some uh, color grading love, added some uh, lens flares and some random post processing like chromatic aberration around the edges and stuff just to kind of bring it all together. This is actually my favorite part of making these 3D scenes. It usually kind of levels the visuals up quite a bit once you start working on some color grading and stuff and that's very fun to see. After some epic sound design, this was my final result. I want to give a big thank you for watching this video and I really hope it gave you something, maybe just a little bit of inspiration. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.